Kia ora, here, kia ora, here are the two harder questions from question one of last year's integration exam. So this first one is um, a nice wee question and quite a common one. We're trying to find the value of k, which is one of my limits of integration, when this whole integral equals 4. So let's um, start off by just writing it out again and seeing what we should do with it. So visually what you can think of us doing here is that we've got a graph um, and it looks something like this. We're trying to find the value of k that's going to make that area equal to 4. Okay, so let's just start by integrating. Well, e to the 2x will integrate to itself. But when we differentiate that, that's going to give me 2e to the 2x. I want 3, not 2, so I divide through by the 2, right? You should be pretty used to that by now. And then we've got k here and 0 here, and that equals 4. So um, continuing with the substitution, we get 3 over 2e to the 2k minus 3 over 2e to the power of 0 is equal to 4. So 3 over 2 e to the power of 2k is equal to, well this is just 1, so 4 plus 3 over 2 gives me 11, 11 over 2. We can multiply through, remember we're trying to solve for k, and we get e to the power of 2k is equal to 11 over 3. And now I can take logs of both sides, so 2k is equal to the natural log of 11 over 3, and k is equal to a half log 11 over 3, which is a pretty ugly number really, it's just 0.6496, and that's all there is to it. So my value of k here has now been discovered by us to be 0.6496, and when we make it that value, then the area under the curve, between those two values, I'm just enjoying colouring in here, um, will be equal to 4. So that's all there is to it. And that's a um, merit question. Now, the next one is a little bit trickier if you're not confident with trig. But if you are confident with trig, which lots of you are, um, this question is fine. So here we're given a result that we won't have seen before, but it doesn't really matter. And it says that there's a way to figure out the average value of a function between two points A and B, and it's given by this. So I'll write this out more easily, and you'll see that it's not really a very big drama. It's 1 over B minus A times the integral like that. So what we're asked to do in this question is to take something we haven't seen before and apply it to a situation. So we're going to find the mean value of this function, y is equal to sine squared x, between x is equal to 0 and x is equal to pi. And from looking, we can see that the function goes from 0 up to 1, so we know that our answer is going to be somewhere in between those two numbers. Okay, and they've shown you part of the graph. So the next step is to apply this mean value formula, and we've got our two limits, so the limits are going to be 0 and pi. So the mean value will be 1 over pi minus 0 from pi to 0 times sine squared x dx. So that's the first step. Now the tricky bit comes next, and you've got to remember back to trig, this is really hard to integrate. So what am I going to use to sort that out? Well, we go back to our favourite trig identities, the double angles. So cos of 2x has got three versions, but the one we want here is 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. So we're going to rewrite sine squared of x in terms of something nice and easy. So sine squared of x will be 1 half of 1 minus cos 2x. We're going to make that substitution now. All right, so just put that in a little box, and we'll keep on going with our integral.
Okay, I'll keep going with that on the next slide, but you probably will want to pause and finish the question off from here. So I'm going to pull that one half through the integral and I get 1 over 2 pi time, uh, yeah, times this integral. 1 minus sine 2x dx. So that equals 1 over 2 pi times x minus, let's check if it's a minus. We've got cos of 2x and that differentiates to give me negative sign. So that's looking not what I want. I want to have plus one half. Always check your trig integration back manually if you have to. So a half cos 2x, just do it somewhere down here like this, will generate one half times 2, negative 2, sine 2x. Is that what we want? Yes, it is. So that's all good. Right, so back to the problem. We've got this. 1 over 2 pi times pi plus a half cos 2 pi minus 0 plus a half cos of 0. Be really careful with cosine of 0. It's an easy place to fall over. So 1 over 2 pi times pi plus 1 half minus 0 minus 1 half. Now just how am I doing this so quickly? Well, you might have forgotten. Here's what the cosine graph looks like. So cosine of 0 is 1. The period is 2 pi, so cosine of 2 pi is also 1. So that gives me a final answer of pi on 2 pi, which is just equal to a half. Now think back to where we started. We had a nice graph of that function that looked like that. It went from 0 to 1, so our answer makes good sense. The average value over that um, domain of that interval is equal to 1 half.